So back in 2020, I was working as a data journalist in a newsroom. We had just covered the 2019 elections and then gone through a round of budget cuts and layoffs. I was also working on my master's thesis at the same time, but I didn't have the bandwidth for it. Then the pandemic hit with all of its attendance stresses. I quit my job and declared that I was burnt out. Now, burnout is a syndrome that is caused by excessive workplace stress, and it manifests as feelings of exhaustion and increased cynicism and pointlessness. But what does burnout feel like? To me, it felt like this. Sometimes, words don't work the way we want them to. They don't come out right, or there are too many of them, or not enough or they come out in thick paragraphs that no one bothers to read, especially if they're on a sans serif font with weird spacing. That is when we turn to images. They say things that words can't or don't want to. And with the advent of high-speed data and smartphones with screens, which make images so much easier to disseminate, they seem more and more now in millions of different ways, if we only know how to read them. I finally got that master's degree. And these days I work as an information designer and I teach visual storytelling. What that entails is that I make images and talk about how. I also teach students how to make their own. Sometimes these images are based on data, large collections of material that images very efficiently condense. Sometimes they're based on less tangible things. What do fact checkers do? What do onions think? Or the cover for a book about what data reveals and conceals about India. Now, I came to image making late. I trained as an engineer. So for the first 25 years of my life, I thought words and numbers are all anyone really needs. I thought naming a painting untitled was a cop-out, because clearly you couldn't be bothered to articulate what your painting was about. I thought picture books were really for children who didn't yet know how to read. And I thought abstraction, calling a work of art abstract, was a polite insult. I know better now. Sometimes, untitled means that the artist wants you, the viewer, to do the work of feeling your way through an image rather than them telling you what to think. Picture books are most definitely not just for children. We all deserve to be told stories filled with color and whimsy. And abstraction, sometimes, is a way of exploding pure feeling, long past the point where words have ceased to work. In this multimedia world, we are surrounded by images, millions of them messaging at us in a relentless semaphore. But how often do we take the time to read them? And for the first 25 years of my life, even if I had taken the time, I'm not sure that I would have known how to read them at all. So I thought it would be interesting to talk about the ways in which images are read, the way I wish I had been taught alongside words and numbers. Anything can happen in an image. This is the Bushmiller principle, identified by Fred Lynch, based on the Nancy comic by Ernie Bushmiller. Images aren't governed by the laws of physics or of grammar. They have a certain internal logic, and they follow principles of composition and harmony. But these principles aren't set in stone, and really they evolve even as image making evolves. Images are non-linear. We don't read them from start to finish, but all at once. Yes, the image maker guides the eye from one detail to the next to the next. This image was created for the center spread of a newspaper to illustrate a story about the ownership of music royalties. 
the idea was that as a reader turned open to the center spread we would first read the title then their gaze would drop to the image and then they would read the text text image text image both together from left to right in perspective absorbing details as they go the same image viewed on a screen looks very different the scale has changed the interaction has changed from a flip open to a scroll down the relationship with the text has changed the way in which it is viewed changes the image images explain things that words can't during the pandemic everyone was talking about flattening the curve and the curve is an image it represents the number of active covid cases and the argument went the so long as the peak of the curve is kept below the capacity of healthcare systems the systems would not be overwhelmed the painter arthur dow wrote no accidents enter into pictures but every line light or dark must be part of a deliberate design so one way of reading images is to take them apart into their constitutive elements and see how they were put together as part of their deliberate design the basic elements that make up an image are line which forms shape color light and shadow and composition it is these simple elements that come together in an infinite number of ways to create the pictures we know but images are also specific to a culture they draw from it and this gives them power during covid governments around the world were messaging to their citizens stay home mask up wash your hands and this messaging took a variety of different forms In the UK it was famously emblazoned across the podium from which nightly healthcare briefings were given Stay home protect the national health service save lives In India the messaging was very different Images draw from all that came before and all that will come to pass They're like vortices in time An image like this of a baby drinking soda back in the 1950s when it was first released was just marketing but viewed now it is shocking an image at the point of its creation contains the past and the present in its context but because the image continues to exist as the world around it changes its meanings change too images condense information This is most literally true in data images where entire spreadsheets get turned into simple trend lines or decades of data are converted into a single powerful collection of stripes The warming stripes by Ed Hawkins show years as cooler or hotter than a certain baseline period In this case each stripe is a year between 1850 and 2021 These stripes no longer require annotations they've been disseminated so widely that we already know what it is they imply professor hawkins also made a climate spiral which had monthly rather than yearly data same concept nasa took that and turned it into a 3d spiral with their scientific visualization laboratory now i took nasa's 3d spiral and turned it into an eye for a poster for an exhibition of works on environmental storytelling and this image has become many other things in the hands of many other people images are alive images can be dangerous just as much as words this chart shows the number of gun deaths in the american state of florida before and after the passage of a stand your ground law Stand your ground laws allow ordinary citizens to use deadly force in case of a perceived threat. On cursory reading, it looks like the number of gun deaths in Florida fell right after the passage of the law. But then you look closer and you realize that the y-axis is inverted. So today I've talked to you about some of the things I've learned in the past 10 years. 
Images can be read in a variety of different ways through their constructive properties, their cultural, social, and political contexts, the intent behind them, the ways in which they are disseminated, and how they are imagined and reimagined in the minds of image makers and in the minds of viewers. The making and the consumption of images are responsibilities that we cannot take lightly. Margaret Atwood wrote, a word after a word after a word is power. By the same token, a color after a shape, after a line is power. Thank you.